Today I'm going to answer a question by a couple of students actually. The questions are on the video about small signal amplifiers and the first question comes from a student who goes by the name of a musical psychosis. And the question is, I understand everything except where the 13K and 7K came from. Can anybody explain this? He said he put a potentiometer in place of the first two resistors and adjusted it until he had 4 volts out. Then what happened? I'm assuming he measured the resistance on the pot, but how did he arrive at the final resistance values? And then a student named Ron Van Wiegen followed up with, This confused me too. Why not 14 and 6 or 12 and 8, etc.? Or for that matter, 16 and 4 or 8 and 12, etc.? Does it matter? Well, let's take a look at the part of the video in question and then see how we can answer that. How are we going to choose these two resistors? Well, it's fairly easy if you want to make a quick and dirty amplifier and trying to avoid the calculations. We want this resistor to be fairly big compared to this one, maybe at least about 10 times as big. So let's start by using a 20K potentiometer in place of these two resistors. And let's get this out of the way just for uncluttering the board here. And we already know what that is, so we get that out of the way. So here's a simple amplifier. We've eliminated our capacitors and we've replaced those with a 20K resistor. All we have to do now is power this up and put a DC voltmeter right there and start turning this until what? Remember that we want the quiescent voltage, in other words the voltage with no signal input, to be one half of our power supply voltage. That way our input can swing it all the way up to 8 volts or all the way down to 0 volts without hitting the limits. We cannot go above 8 volts, we can't go down below 0 volts. And if we hit those limits, we get clipping distortion. So we don't want that to be, uh, we don't want our sine wave flattened out at the top or the bottom. So to make it symmetrical, to give us the room to go either way as much as possible, we want to make this voltage half of our maximum voltage. So all we do is crank this potentiometer until we see 4 volts there. Easy peasy. Now let's take a look at what we've got. If we look at the rest of the circuit with the voltmeter, we would see that we probably have about 2 volts here and expect about 2.7 volts there. So it's 7 tenths of a volt above, the so the base is 7 tenths of a volt above the emitter and pretty much like we expect. Now what we want to do just to find out what these resistors are is simply measure this. And when I did this, I came up with, let's put the resistors back there. Thirteen K and seven K. Okay, so here's the circuit in question. And what I need to do is determine what these two resistors need to be. And I could do some calculations to figure that out, but I don't want to teach math in this class. I want to teach the concept. So I'm going to cheat and I'm going to replace these with a potentiometer. After all, what is a potentiometer? It's just simply a, a a resistor with a contact point and so it acts like two resistors where as I turn it this way this side gets smaller. Let me just draw that as two resistors here. Okay so there's what a potentiometer is and as I turn the knob let's say if I turn it one way this resistor gets smaller and that one gets bigger and if I turn it the other one this one gets smaller and that one gets bigger. So that's what the potentiometer is doing, and I can measure the resistances between these three points once I determine what combination of resistance I have. So I don't know what those resistors are going to be. And so I chose a 20K potentiometer. Why? I wanted a fairly high input impedance. I didn't do any calculations. I just thought 20K sounds reasonable to me. So let's go ahead. I'm going to eliminate this capacitor for a minute. Well, it's just, I'll leave it there, but... 
I'm not going to have it in the circuit because it'll be too cluttered, but we don't need it for determining the DC bias anyway. So there's our 8 volts. Here's our potentiometer. And the wiper goes to the base of the transistor. Now, what else did I need to know? I wanted this to be plus 4 volts. So here's my 20K pot. Once again, I just pulled out a 20K pot, said that looks like that will do. And then I adjusted that up and down until I got just the right base current to get just the right collector current that it pulled this voltage down just right to 4 volts. Now I have those resistors where I want them, and as you asked, did you just measure that with an ohmmeter? That's exactly what I did. So I pulled that out of the circuit, and I put an ohmmeter here, and measured that, and I came up with 13K. And then I put the ohmmeter on the other half, and measured 7K. So now I had 13K on this side, 7K on that side, and that adds up to 20K, so there's all my 20,000 ohms. So now I know if I want to put fixed resistors in this circuit, all I need to do is get those two values. So let's put them there. seven K, 13 K. And now we have the complete circuit there with the input coupling capacitor, which I forgot the output coupling capacitor, but that's not important right now anyway. So that's where I came up with those numbers, exactly as you asked. I measured them. Now, uh, Mr. Van Wiegen asked, well, why not 14 or six or 12 and eight or six and 14? Why not a different combination? Well, because if I did a different combination, let's say I brought this resistance down and that resistance up, I would get more current in the base, more current in the collector. That would pull this down something below 4 volts. I want that to remain 4 volts. Let's get the clutter out so we don't lose track of what we're doing. If I made this something higher than it is, making this lower, then I would get less current into the base, less current into the collector. That means this voltage would be something higher than 4 volts. So 13 and 7, just by cranking the pot until I got to that 4 volts, 13 here and 7 there is just the voltage that worked to make that 4 volts. Now, could I have calculated that out? Sure. Do I want to? No. I'm lazy. Hope that answered your question. I thought I was being clear about it. I apologize if I wasn't clear enough, but that's what the comments are for down there. Ask questions and I'll answer as many as I have time for and once in a while, other people come and answer them for me, and I think that's great. I love the interaction I'm getting in the comments. So once again, I hope that answered your question. If it didn't, yeah, go ahead and ask again. I'll try to clarify. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible and a big thank you to everyone for watching.